you know what time it is. What's up, beer people? If you heard it on the hashtag beer time, it's true. It must be true. It's true. It is fact. Please, won't you name one of your beers Car Force? And just do something terrible. <laughs> just <laughs> shit beer. Yeah. Stick your finger in there every now and again. <laughs> Stir it with a yeah. sock. <laughs> every show, it feels like my first show. Every show is a new adventure. <laughs> have some good conversation here, Mr. Troy. Did I make sense there? I think I did. Oh, I love them all. Are we off air? <laughs>
We, awesome. we, we, we never had any other alcohol. We, we, all, we always had one beer, or traditional uh, thing. Traditionally, we, all, we always had one beer, which is, was Umkombodi, basically. Yes. So it was called Ujwala. So because of that, everything alcoholic that came out of that was also called Ujwala. Ah, uh, okay. The original Ujwala okay. is, is So if you, could, you yeah. could go to a liquor store and you could yeah. order Ujwala, yeah. uh, it could be anything. Yeah, it could it could be anything. Especially, yeah. there, there was others. I, I'm not sure exactly what time in history they, they came. I remember when I was young, my grandmothers used to make this one, uh, and uh, it was illegal actually. It's they distilled <laughs> it. It's distilled one uh, back home. They used to call it Tototo. Tototo. So, yeah, Tototo. Is well, we just played some Tototo. To. No, no, no. Oh, it's not no, no, Tototo. To. No, <laughs> cops will be here in no time. So. <laughs> so it totally came from the way that it drops, so it would be like yeah, it's more like a homemade postal kind of a thing. Yes. So it would be dropping like. Ta, ta, ta. Uh, okay, bit by bit. Every now and then, yeah, bit, bit by bit. So, but I think that came way, way, way later. But mm. before, I think the earliest was Mkomboti, basically. Um, 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 well, let's yeah. let's let's all, all those, those, those all those clicks, <laughs> and I'm going to ask you about those clicks. But let's <laughs> let's have a little sniff. Yeah. So basically, what I'm drinking here, from what I understand yeah. it's a it's a sorghum saison so it's a blend would you would you call this beer a blended beer uh, no it's not a blend i wouldn't call it a blend uh it's a uh, it's a localized mm. saison basically yeah i much prefer that i much yes i let, like let, that let me say africanized africanized it sounds, sounds better that way yeah <laughs> okay so it's cuz i'm trying to get um you know, people who are from out of South Africa, yeah. we, we believe it or not, we have a big American listenership and a big yeah. uh, European listenership. Yeah. They're familiar with Saison. Yeah, they're yeah. not familiar with, maybe uh, in generally, they're not, they're not too familiar with sorghum. Yeah. And m- including that into your beer. Yeah. So just let's, let's take it back a bit now. What's the, can you explain for us, Explain to us the traditional ways of making sorghum beer. Okay, traditional ways, um, unlike, I don't know if I should talk, like I'm talking to someone who understands the, the making of beer in general or not. Yes, okay. because I think the majority of our listeners do understand the processes. The processes, yeah. Um, I think what's, what's interesting is the duration of the uh, yeah. sorghum beer. So t- talk us through that process. So basically, um, the most basic way uh, is day one when you start making it, you mix it basically with water, kind of mashing. So this is the sorghum, uh, uh, like the the sorghum wheat. Mold. Yeah, it's like okay. It's not like wheat. Sorghum is is more close to you can more like in the millet family. Not millets. Wheat. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. it's it's gluten free. Yeah. That's good. Gluten-free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not like the the, the, the wheat and the body and stuff like that. It's okay. a different family. So day so, one. So day one, obviously you make the mold, obviously, which the molting the same way uh, yes. across. And then you take that mold and uh, mill it, which is basically the same process as well. Then you mix it you, you, with uh, warmish water, like lukewarm water. Okay. So unlike um, uh, modern beer methods where you, like it's more like hot water and stuff like that. It's, it's just lukewarm water. Then, uh, so like easy, so water that's you can still touch. Yeah, that and you can touch. Not boiling. No, no, that a baby can touch. Okay. Yeah, that a baby can touch. Okay, so it's 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 a it's a general yeah. understanding more than a precise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so the, yeah yeah you, you, you don't use thermometers there. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, what what happens? They obviously they activate those enzymes and then the the wild yeast that stays in the in the uh, uh, cups of the of the grain, yes, uh, start getting active, and then it starts kind of a bit of uh, fermentation in there, and then obviously because the white is kind of gets this tartness of sourness, mm. so it's, it's almost like a yeah. instant activation. Yeah, it's more you, like you, you, it's you're more not even you're not even going through that mashing process. It's just like grain, yeah, yeast. Let's get that. Let's get that fermentation jump start, kick started. Yeah, it, it's a little like making a kettle sour. Yes. You have to Mesh and leave it for night to to okay to, okay to, to, to sour up yes. and then continue with the thing, but then you do that that process. But then the next day, instead of uh, uh, meshing out or lautering, you don't lauter, you 
take that whole thing, porridge, and 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 add it to boiling water and okay. make a porridge that will boil. Okay. So now you have a, a sour porridge that you have made. Mm. Uh, actually, we used to eat that porridge as well. I, I read somewhere that people you can yeah. eat that the next day. Yeah, you can eat that porridge. Um, it's very nice. And, and then you've got that and liquid. Then, Is it still yeah. called wort? No, it's not wort. We, 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 uh, isn't the villain we call we call it umhiko or estosa um, umhiko? Okay. Or istutu, like as as they call it istutu. Istutu. Is istutu. Istutu. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that istutu is now put uh, like in the open, like mm. late in in buckets. In a bucket. Okay. And, like to 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 cool down. We have to cool it to zero, basically. No. What 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 kind of buckets are we talking? Like a twenty liter, fifty liter? No, not exactly buckets, but anything that's that's wide, like like a dish. Like okay, dishes. so it's op- very yeah, much open, no, very much open. Lots of big yeah. surface area, a big surface area. And okay, you want to cool it? Okay, and then when it's cooled, it's it's, it's totally cooled down. Sometimes you almost like over. a cooling ship, I'd imagine. Yeah. So because <laughs> you're cooling it outside, you, yes. you don't have anything. You leave it sometimes leave it overnight. Then the next morning it's cold, and then they take that thing again. Again, yes. put it back in the drum. Okay. Something, and then you add some water. Uh, so now this, at this stage, you've just got the liquid that you're working with. You just have the porridge, and then you add your water to make it more liquid. Ah, uh, okay. Because the okay. porridge is quite thick. It's almost, okay. yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not liquid. It's okay, okay, okay. It's more like, yeah, it's quite thick. Uh, I can't think porridge, it. it's like porridge, yeah. Yeah, porridge. And then you, 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 you add water to it, and then you add some more malt to it to to to. to Get back the what the, the, the so you do add some some malt yeah some raw malt now okay that's not cooked because remember that one is cooked okay and now you add some more malt that's not cooked are, you, are we talking about the tra- traditional traditional western, westernized no 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 the, the, okay we're talking about the sorghum I'm, I'm talking about the umkombot umkombot okay yeah. we, so you yeah. add in yeah. uh, the sorghum malt yes. Okay, so, okay. So, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. You're with me now. You're yes, me and now. I hope, I think my <laughs> listeners are also <laughs> with me. Okay, let me summarize again. You start by mixing the the the, the malt with the water. Sometimes they, you add a bit of uh, mealy meal. Yes. Uh, maize meal and stuff like that. Um, then from there, you make the porridge the next day. And then that porridge, you cool it down. Then the next day, you take the porridge that's cool and uh, mix it with water and add more like some more new like a, a raw malt okay into it basically what you what you do now you you're replacing the yeast the live yeast that's all uh, that's that stays in the grain yes you know and then from there you leave it overnight again okay then it ferments so this is now three days that's now three days and and it depends sometimes it takes longer if depending on the weather if it's if it's uh if it's cold yes. the cooling will be faster yes. but the, the fermentation will be slower, slower. okay okay you know? So then from there it will ferment. If if it's a, on a hot day, it will ferment faster overnight. You'll be, you'll be having a beer next morning. Oh, nice. And then uh, we do what we call Ushuza, which is filtering. But it doesn't filter like to to clear, to, to clear it like this. Sure. Beer, you know, it leaves it porridgey, like and it looks cloudy, milky, and, yes. and, uh, and opaque, basically. Okay. You know, then you've got a beer. People start so, it's, it's a, uh, so when you say opaque, it's very white. It's very white, yeah. And okay, no, that's not, okay. Very, not very white, more pale, white, white. <laughs> white, white. Yeah. every yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. So you've got beer, but th- that process can take anything from four to seven days sometimes. Okay, yeah. But I mean, still, if you had to t- tell someone that you could make a an African beer in four days, it's very hard to believe that. Yeah. But and that's what that's what I find so fascinating about this whole process and this. Yeah. The, the, the fact that it's also it's included in the beer category. Yeah. But it's an African beer. It's an African and, beer. But it's still a yeah. beer. It's still a beer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that yeah. a lot of um, yeah. uh, maybe Brewers Association members or people yeah. from the European Union who would disagree. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think the process is still the same. And it's, you know, it's, it's just not a westernized beer, it's, which is absolutely 100%. And we... I'm stoked that it's 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 quite uh, yeah it's it's quite weird because if if we're talking about beer as we know it like right now as modern beer or should I say what what comes up as if so you say the word beer to to me yes it's the Western idea of beer mm. you know uh, or in in a general sense so, it's just lager so so if they say uh, it's not beer in their way 
uh, it's probably the uh, the fine because they only wear beer, and it could also be just an uneducated also, but, or unknowing. Yeah, but people. also we on our side we we also have the right to say it's beer because it's beer to us. This sure, is we, exactly. It's called beer, you know. So yeah. No, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, I, thank you for that that story. And I, there is going to be a lot of questions, more questions coming from me in terms of you know traditions. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I love the fact that it's, it's it's brewed in four days. Now, yeah. I I, yeah. I admit that I it's it's something that's readily available yeah. for the consumer to buy for for an average Joe like myself to go into a shop to buy. It. I did this yeah. maybe oh I'm guessing three four years ago, yeah. maybe even longer five years ago because I was yeah. in my old apartments and I wanted to make sorghum beer because I was okay. so interested. Yeah. That you could make beer in three to four days. Yeah. And what no one told me, I mean, I, I got a lot of, I went into the local uh, Golden Acre to the, I think it was a Checkers or whatever, the, yeah. oh, the store that we have here. Yeah. And I bought this this big bag of, of, malt. of, of uh, sorghum, sorghum malt. malt. Yeah. And I got a lot of looks in the queue. People were, <laughs> here was this, um, uh, yeah. Mlungu, yeah. white man. Yeah. Uh, they were they, they were they were saying, "What are you going to do with this?" What are you going to do with this? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, "Now I'm going to try and make utwala." And yeah. they, uh, they had a good time. They had a good yeah. chuckle. Yeah. But what no one, what maybe I didn't do enough research is that I had no idea that it was going to be sour. <laughs> I I because I made this. I followed the recipes. I, I did a lot of research, and I yeah. I, I made this um, this twenty liter batch in my kitchen. Mm. And after two days, my housemate just said to me, what the hell is that <laughs> smell coming from our kitchen? And I said, no, it's beer. Let's try, let's try some. And yes, we, we, we tried some and it, yeah. Was, yeah. it was incredibly sour. But, oh, but, you know, it's just obviously something which we're not used to. Yeah. I suppose, it's like you said, you know, you, and we could take it a step further and yeah. compare it to people who are not used to craft beer. Yeah. Yeah. People who've been drinking lager their whole life. Their whole life, yeah. My, my father, for example, when you talk to him about beer, it's a lager. It's a lager. And when you say to him, come try this, even if it's a pale ale, yeah. a little baby step into a pale ale or a, a, uh, you know, an IPA or any, any yeah. Russian imperial stuff, they, yeah. they, they can't, that's not they a beer. To, that is not a beer, beer for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's just, I think, a generation thing and it's yeah. learning and getting there in terms of yeah. beer styles. And I think this is one of those traditional, yeah. almost forgotten kind of recipe, recipe which yeah. I think the, the beer community around the world yeah. is going to start making a lot of noise about. Yeah. Because I, I feel that it's, a, it's one of those beers that's, yeah, like I said, it's forgotten, and you yeah. want to kind of bring it back. It. Yeah. yeah, and what that's what they did with the old styles of the, the porters, of the, 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 yeah. the IPA, yeah. um, and so yeah. this is an, a very exciting beer or style category. Yeah, um, and I like that you've called this the sorghum saison, the yeah. African saison. Yeah, um, could you? I can't believe I've got like a little sip left. Mm. Open another one. You know, you have bought another one, and I think yeah. it would be. Ru- I am thirsty. I am Best thirsty. Let yeah. let let oh. let's crack this open. Yeah. Um, oh, ice cold. So maybe when I'm pouring this, maybe you can just tell the listeners your brewing process and how yeah. you make this um, this sorghum saison, and what's different. Doesn't yeah. take four days to make, I assume. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Th- this one I make it basically uh, like any other uh, 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 modern beer. Yes. Uh, the only thing, the only difference slightly is the fact that um, meshing with sorghum is a bit difficult. Because I'd imagine it's it quite sticky. Gets quite sticky. Yeah. Even at uh, as low as fifty degrees Celsius, it gets quite sticky. So, uh, and also another thing. Um, doesn't have as much uh, uh, sugars, like uh, okay. simple sugars, as as barley uh, mm. does. So I, I add a bit of um, I mix with um, malted barley. Okay. Uh, Can process. you tell us what percentage? Um, more like uh, sixty forty. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
And sort of. the first thing that comes to mind is a stuck sparge. Yeah. Do you, do you have that or do you have some way in which you can so, so skip I, that out? I, I, start with, uh, I start with barley. Yes. I start with malted barley at the bottom. Okay. And then have the, the, the sorghum on top. Okay. So the, the husks from, from, the, from the barley create a, a filter, a, a natural filter. A natural filter. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah. Uh, I do have once in a while, but it's not something too hectic. I just have to bomb it back with water, like with the house pipe. Okay. It so it's an easy fix. And then it, it, it flows, yeah. But when I was uh, when I first uh, developed this recipe, it was 100% sorghum. So the idea was to create a 100% sorghum beer, gluten, uh, totally gluten free. Yes. And I had a lot of stuck meshes. I and, can uh, imagine. And I would uh, sometimes use um, rice husks, husks that I would buy yes. from my home. Yes, slim husks. Yes. Yeah, those ones, and they would help a lot. But uh, bringing in a bigger system to get enough of those, it's it's a mission. Yeah. yeah I, I, yeah. And like you said, I, I imagine it's you're not getting the potential gravity that you'd yeah. expect. Exactly. So, for, for example, what is uh, a traditional sorghum beer? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. In the one that you previously just explained, what kind of alcohol are we talking about? It's low, isn't it? It's, it's low. It might be like 3.5. Okay. At so, least, it's that, uh, even that, 3.5, yeah. if, yeah. if you had to say what the, with the method that you just explained, yeah. 3.5 is still quite yeah. high. Still quite high. But I was expecting two percent, but it should be under three. But because it's a wild yeast, it will continue fermenting. It will ah, continue okay. making away, and uh, as soon as it gets to above three to three point five, that's where it gets very sour. So the way you describe it is with uh, the one that you tried to make with your friend in in, in your apartment mm -hmm. uh, and failed. You probably, <laughs> and failed. You probably. Uh, kept it for a little too long, mm. uh, and it fermented a little too long, and then got to a sour type or whatever. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but normally I, I wouldn't sell, uh, if it's well made, I wouldn't describe it as sour. It's got a sour perception, obviously, mm. but it, on the palate, it's more tart than sour. Yes, if the more it stays, yes, it gets really sour. Yeah. What what can we try and describe that sourness as? Is it like a sour worm? You know, you get those sour worms from the yeah. shops, yeah. and if you if you put a whole bunch in your mouth, and yeah. then you get that initial yeah. side of the cheeks kind of eyes tearing up. Yes. It's, that's it's almost similar to that, but not. It's 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 weird because the sorghum also has a bit of bitterness. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of bitterness at the back of the throat there. Yeah. So there's a little bit of balance. Yeah. So it's not completely sour, sour, sour. No, it's not completely sour. Yeah. It, there's a bit uh, of break yeah. from yeah. Uh, there's the handbrake from yeah. the <laughs> from the bitterness. From, from the, from the, yeah. So back, what you are saying is that you're not getting that sugar content that you would from a traditional yeah malted body. Yeah, you yeah you want yeah. It's, it's 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 got less. Okay, so it's something that I'm still working on. I'm I'm still researching much more on. Uh, it could be a question of enzymes. Mm. Uh, some scholars say that it's the the enzymes that you get in the soccer mold. Maybe it doesn't have uh, produce enough enzymes. Maybe you have to uh, introduce some um, enzymes that are uh, uh, whatever that you buy from somewhere else. I haven't done that yet. Actually, well, I know that a, a yeah, period does not a lot of research, doesn't she? She does. I've spoken to her about that. Uh, We're talking now about a Piwe who's yeah. in Joburg, and yeah. she has brew crafters, if I'm correct. Brewster's Craft. Brewster's Craft. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah. And she used to be the head brewer at... Um, not Hogwarts. Uh, I'm thinking Hogs. brew hogs. I was thinking of Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be yeah. the, the brewer at Hogwarts. Yeah. Uh, Hogwarts. Um, <laughs> Hogwarts. Hmm, Hogwarts Brewing Company. There's a name. Um, mm -hmm. Where were we? So, yeah, we, we were talking about the enzymes. Yeah. So, I, I've spoken to her about that. And um, and uh, there's a guy called Kofi from um, Lalamand. Okay, Lalamand. Uh, Lalamand. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I'm still on that. So, it could be something better that could come out of that. But, yeah, from so many people, uh, I also researched there's a guy apparently in Ghana who's studied a craft brewery and he's brewing at Sogam and apparently he uses a lot of uh, enzymes, he adds some enzymes to, to get better. Your story yeah. almost reminds me of, if I can compare it to a story, is yeah. when when the the first wave of cra of homebrewers started in South Africa. Yeah. Because we had very limited resources yeah. when we started. Yeah. We 
I remember, you, you know, if you wanted to buy a yeast, yeah. you would go to a white pharmacy, which was this uh, pharmacy in, in town. Yeah. And it was the only place that had beer kits. But oh. I'm talking about one type of yeast, one type of brown hops, pelletized hops, and oh. maybe three, if you're lucky, types of malt. But it was mainly like syrups and stuff. Yeah. But also like you, if you wanted to do research or you wanted whether it is a specific ingredient, whether it was a specific yeah. uh, piece yes, of equipment. Yeah. You had to research and you had to go look for it. It wasn't readily available like, like some <clears throat> stuff is now. Yeah. I remember I had to drive for like two hours. There's a, there was a guy who was making uh, a, um, a grain crusher. Yeah. And I still, well, mind you, I still have this grain crusher today. It's done yeah. a great job. Yeah. So, but now... If you wanted one, you've got not just one place, but yeah. you've got three suppliers three. with different types. Yeah, with different types. So know. your story kind of reminds me of yeah. not just where home brewers were, but maybe where craft brewers were a few well, years ago. A few years ago, yeah. So you're obviously an early adopter to this new kind of movement, yeah. which is going to get there. Yeah. Um, it's just you have to obviously, like you said, you have to put in a little bit of research and time. Yeah, yeah you have to. Uh, I think I came... All this talking is making yeah. me thirsty. I've been a man. I think I came into the uh, into the homebrewing scene when you guys maybe were like in it for maybe two years or three years. Okay. So it was it was still pretty the mm. same thing. I remember I used to brew with these other guys and we were talking about the uh, uh, grain mill. We used to use the, the, this hands operated one. Hand one. Okay, lovely. In the restaurants, they used to crush chili. Yes, yes, yes. And stuff like that or garlic and stuff like mm -hmm, that. That's mm -hmm. what we used. I remember I, I, I was looking so much like it was actually it was even difficult to find that one. On you, you, you've reminded uh, me of a very funny story and that was yeah. I think it was the week or the day it was the week mm -hmm. before I bought my grain crusher because yeah. I, I'm trying to think what we had before. We I don't know what we used before. We I think we, we, we even well, this was the start of my, my, my brewing days with mm. my good old buddy uh, Hilton Brown. We called ourselves Masters Brown and May. <laughs> I don't know why we <laughs> called ourselves Masters, but um, we, we, we even got a, a blitzer, a blender yeah. to, to blend the, the malt. But obviously, oh. it made it into powder. Oh. And you can't do that. Oh, no. And I think the next time we, tried, we, we bought whatever, five kilograms for a, a 19 liter batch, which is about five gallons. We bought our malt yeah. and we had forgotten our, our, some form of crusher, whatever we had, yeah. like that hand thing. So we got out a rolling pin. Okay, yeah. And I promise you, by la thin layer by layer, we yeah. had to crush yeah. the malted barley. Oh, yeah. And I, I was, I I, I'm pretty sure the mashing process even happened yeah. while I was doing it because I was sweating so much <laughs> over it. And it took, it must have taken about an hour to just to crush yeah. our, our grain. Yeah. Um, and the very next week, I went and bought mine. Yeah, my group, my grain crusher. My yeah, I, I did use a bottle as a as a rolling pin. Uh, to think, I think I remember. I, I think I was with Nolly and my girlfriend. Mm. We were doing that one there, uh, on a on a counter. On a the struggle counter. is real. No, the struggle is real. And, 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 real, and the struggle man. still <laughs> continues, no it's, matter what. It continues, man. Uh, yes. I, I always say that's the problem of being in uh, part of the in the movement where it's pining your face. It's, you exactly. You're you have to find your, you. you have to find your, your own way. And the guys that are going to come 10 years later are like, what are you guys talking about? You know, no, you yeah. and you touched on a great subject yeah. because they, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people think that the, we're going to get into a whole nother subject. I was going to play some music, but let's, yeah. let's talk about this quickly. The, the market is so well equipped now with yeah. suppliers, with, New uh, industry suppliers coming on board with new associate uh, new associations being formed, being formed yeah. Um, yeah. and people still think no wait the market is a bit saturated yeah. too many brewers yeah. but I tell you what if you started a brewery now yeah. you you have never been in a better position to start a brewery yeah. in South Africa, in South Africa yeah. because yeah. you've got people who have done that trial and error. Yeah, you, who failed <laughs> and who've come back and learned their mistakes, yeah. and who've trusted have trusted suppliers and people yeah. who have gone through phase one. Yeah, it's yeah. like when um, I never I, I never bought a, a PlayStation One. I never I never owned a PlayStation, but yeah. I never bought the first generation of a TV yeah. game. Yeah, 
because I'd always wait for the second generation because I know that yeah. the second would be improvements and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know if other people do that, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> <coughs> I think yeah. I think we can carry on talking, but let's mm. let's take a quick a quick little break yeah. um, okay. and have I'm gonna finish off my beer. Let's play. Oh, I'm gonna play. Oh, I'm gonna play this one. I'm gonna play a little bit of Michael Jackson. Mm. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a bit of Michael Jackson. So my son loves it. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves a little MG. Okay, guys, we'll see you in five minutes' time. See you. Ciao, ciao. And we're back. Ding, 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 ding. You tune into Two Oceans Vibe Radio with me, T Bone Troy, hashtag beer time. We have Ukamba Beer Works in the studio, Mr. Letu. How are you, sir? I'm good. Did you have a you have a good weekend? Uh, I think I always have a good weekend. I, mean, <laughs> I, I make beer. Come on. Man. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, did you manage to catch the rugby? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, it was, uh, a, good, it was a good game. We're talking about the the Springboks versus yeah, England. Springboks. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh, uh, I, I I started with not much uh, expectations, but as it went on, I'm like, ah, ah, we're getting to something here. Let me stay close. Yeah. Let me sit well. Let me sit well. I, um, okay, where's my beer? I went to I went to yeah. I went to gym this morning, and yeah. I went on my. I was gonna just I was just gonna do a quick warm up on the treadmill. Yeah, just five minutes, you know. <laughs> and the rugby was on the highlights. Yeah, and it was actually the the the. It wasn't just the highlights; it was the whole game. They're yeah. re- re-showing it, yeah. and. What turned out to be a, a warm up yeah. was half an hour of running because oh, <laughs> wow. I got so excited oh, yeah. and I just watched the first half and so that was that was a good um, a good a good gym session. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was awesome, namely for the fact that you know Sia Kolisi, yeah, 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 first 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 time as captain, mm. um, the first African captain for for the for the Springboks. Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm correct there. So I guess so. And Oh, yeah. what a game to win! It was good, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we expecting a lot from the boy. He's, he's good. I mean, he's oh, good. yeah, he's good. Goosebumps. I remember, I remember watching him for the first time. I was in, uh, I was in, I was in Pretoria, and uh, they were playing Bulls, and he was uh, playing for Stoma. Yes. Yeah, and I think he comes out. He comes from. When? The how many years ago was this? I can't remember. It must be three, four. Okay, so it's a yeah. while ago. Yeah, it's a while ago. Yeah. And I'm just seeing this guy. I've never seen him before. I'm like, yeah, okay, what are they planning? <laughs> okay, this thing. Hey, I saw the pace and the power. You can see this boy really wants to do it. I'm like, oh, mm. okay, there's something there. Put him on. Put him on, on, coach. Yeah, there's something there. Cool yeah. stuff. Now, I'm yeah. big, uh, a big fan of rugby. If, yeah. For those long-time listeners will know. Uh, so it's good to see the Springboks back in action. That's good, yeah. And, of course, then we won the uh, the Sevens. Not only the uh, the Paris mm-hmm. uh, leg, but we won the entire series. The Sevens, I think. I the think, Sevens. I think we are the All Blacks of Sevens. No. Mm, we don't have yes, I, I, I'll I agree, I agree <laughs> with you, but... Um, <laughs> we should, yeah, we should, we should <clears> dominate <throat> that thing. Yeah, the boys are so good there. Yeah. Uh, I'd like us to dominate. I'd like us to become the, the 15, the, yeah. the new All Blacks, if we can yeah. say it like that. Right, let's get back to beer, because yeah. this show is all about beer. Well, 99% is all about beer. <laughs> uh-huh. And we're talking, we've just finished the delicious sorghum saison. Uchwala. 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 Talk, talk us through quickly yeah. the three phonetic sounds of Koza. I know that there's, a, there's a, a, an X, a Q, and a... What's the other one? Is this one? Twilight. It's the different clicks and sounds on your on your palettes. Yeah, I think the most the most popular ones are like the the X and the Q. Q Q is the side side of the. Okay, and then the. Oh, the, and, the, and the C. Yeah. C. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. do I say it? Twila or not really? Twila, Twila, Twila. Almost. Utwala. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> a little language lesson there. <laughs> Again, all about beer, but yeah. 99% <laughs> of the time only. Let's get on to the next beer, which yeah. I 
I absolutely love and I love it for the name. I love it for the style, the taste. Yeah. But let me open it. Tell me what, what are we drinking here? Uh, this is our IPA, uh, the State Capture IPA. State Capture. Love yeah, it. It's an all day IPA if, uh, if I'm to describe it in that way. Is it drinking? Ooh, delicious. There we go, sir. Yeah, we went we went for flavor and a bit of aroma and less sure. on uh, So now okay, so you obviously or maybe maybe, maybe maybe not obviously, but what did you have a bit of a base recipe to follow? Was it an American style, English style, African style? Uh the to, to be honest, how the beer was born basically it was almost a mistake. I was in a, I was still part of the <laughs> A part of the brewer's co-op, and I uh, was uh, going to the brewery to yes. make uh, our black IPA, okay. the Pursuit of Happiness. So I, I forgot some of the malls at home. Oh. And then here, uh, here I am, the brewery, everything is ready, and I'm about to mill the grains, and I realized that uh, just, I forgot my hops, I forgot my malls. Because, okay, so you're talking yeah. about the brewer's co-op, and now yeah. that's, that's something that people might be interested in. Yeah. Because from what I understand, it's a group of 14... People, sixteen. Sixteen people. Mm. You share equipment in a in a co-op in a space. You in share space, the brewing yeah. equipment, which yeah. means you only have X amount of time to brew yeah. in a day. In a day. And yeah. if you don't have your black malt, as you said, <laughs> yeah, you can't go out and go get it be- no, and can't. come brew later because yeah, maybe someone else. Is that's your time. Yes, book that spot. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is that mm. that's where you started? Was it? Yeah. Um. Basically, I got into the industry when I got a job uh, in a in a bar in the waterfront that sells craft beer. Yes, I remember that. That, that. that was the. I think that's where we first met. That's where we first met. Yeah, actually, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I I didn't know anything about craft beer then, mm. and I always had difficulties selling beer to people. You know, people come like, "Hey, what's the difference between a, uh, an IPA and the pale ale?" I'm like, if you only knew that I don't even know what a pale ale is <laughs> at first to, to begin with. So. I would take time out to go after work, go to the internet to research about beer, go to beer house, drink thing because I'd known that there's a place called Beer House. Absolutely nothing wrong with and that. Was, I think uh, I also used to do that. Yeah, there was a gentleman, uh, Maris Letter. He was. He very, is a gentleman. He, he is, is a gentleman. gentleman. Yeah, he's. I call a, everyone a gentleman, but I tell you what, Maris no, Letter is a gentleman. Is a double gentleman. Mm. So he was always happy to 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 tell me more about beer. He he worked in in the. In the UK, yes, during the the the, 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 the rise of the craft beer wave that time, mm. so he's a very knowledgeable gentleman. Yes, I always credit him for basically teaching me how to, teaching me how to brew, even if he's, he's not he's not a brewer himself. So, okay, yeah, basically he's the guy who, who cultivated the love for beer. Yes, yes, yes. Every time I get there, he's all almost about to knock off. He sees me, he's like puts his back down, and we start talking. Yes. We end up having two beers. Two times six. Two years. Yeah. Two times six packs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Then I became this bartender now who knows so much about craft beer. But you know, when I started home brewing from first day, I just was. I want to open my own brewery one day. I Good. Want to have a, my own brewery. I'm gonna call it to Camber Beer Works. Oh, lovely. So I designed the label and for the beer called Camber Beer Works. And then I Beautiful. started making the beer. And then I became known as this bartender who's who's preparing to open his brewery. Nice. I think people thought I had money. I, that was a good thing. I used to like, <laughs> <laughs> I used to like yes. it. Well, you know, yeah. So, and then okay, I, so you went to this brewer's co-op. Then I joined the co-op, yeah. So the co-op, 15, 16 guys, one system. Basically, everyone is learning and stuff like that. But it's basically a, a melting pot of ideas. They, mm. Everyone comes every day with a, a new idea. They tell you... A, they make something, you ask them, we're sharing this thing, and we, we're basically building each other. That was a huge it, stepping stone for me. If I'm correct, it was a previous guest who we yeah. had on the show, Mr. Yeah. Stefan Visfiedel from Little Wolf. He yes. was also part of the Bros Corp, and I know that he's been getting some traction now yeah. overseas with his yeah. uh, with his Fainbow Spears. Uh, Fainbow Spears, and uh, yeah, yeah, he, he's quite a So he was also one of the, the co op brewers at the co op. Uh, he's, he's one of, he was one of the founding members. Okay. I, I think I brewed with him for, for quite a number of months. I learned a lot from him, actually. Yes, yes. He's a guy who understood a lot of uh, hops. Actually, uh, 
partly for me to be curious about say songs it was partly because of him he was yes. he was the guy who, who wanted to experiment with different types of yeast different types of hops mm. every, everything like that yeah yeah and no, i think he um i think he was one of a few people to have the ibd exam yeah. under his under his belt yeah which is it's a heck of heck of a lot of learning a lot, yeah um yeah. I even attempted to do it, but it was just it was just too busy. To do. <laughs> I studied, yeah. but I just I didn't write the exam. Yeah. Um, before I forget, we need to give a, a special special yeah. special shout out yeah. to our lovely Lucy. Yeah. Lucy Corn, who the brewmistress, who oh, I yes. believe or not became the first yeah. Yeah. Uh, certified Cicerone in South yeah. Africa. In South Africa, yeah, yeah possibly yeah. Africa, yeah. but we don't know. Yeah. Um, but I know that there. From the research that I did, she yeah. is the first person to get level two, wow. which means yeah. it's it's an exam, it's a proper yeah. certification. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the level one, which I think there are a few people who have that, uh, but that's, correct me if I'm wrong, people, just yeah. regist- registering on the website and then maybe doing a, a small test. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big congratulations to Lucy, to who, Lucy yeah. who's getting this qualification, mm-hmm. and I think it's awesome now awesome. that we're starting to get some motion yeah. and the, the the wheels on the train are going That's and just great for me, south yeah. africa i believe is it's a it's a train now there's motion going yeah. into people getting qualifications people brewers mm. getting qualifications yeah. beers getting beer styles yeah. coming from africa like Probably, this yeah. uh, mm. sorghum saison yeah a very exciting time to be uh, in the south african yeah. beer industry yeah yeah Let's yeah. let's get back to what you're explaining to about this beer. You said you yeah. forgot your your black malt when you were brewing this beer, so it yeah. almost came as an accident. Yeah, it was. Um, I just got in some hops from uh, Australia and uh, that I just yeah bought from some guy named Jobex something. You know, it was that time experimenting with a lot of things. This where you were and uh, getting your. Yeah. ingredients from anywhere you can anywhere get. you can get and yes. I, I had a lot of local hops obviously mm. and uh, i was like okay let me just make a pale ale you know maybe something easy drinking you know so i, I did that and then in the middle of boil i've put in my some of my hops my first like uh good shadow hops a little bit mm. and i'm like yeah man i've got those other hops you know what let me go let's do it okay let me just make use the uh, <coughs> local hops in the kettle Yes, and then use the, the the Australian hops to 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 dry hop, you know. So I did that, and I dry hopped a lot. And uh, I made the beer. I remember we were gonna have a function, and uh, it kind of was selling out beer. I think, and then someone was like, "Hey, is your beer ready? Maybe we can put it on tap." Like, yeah, it's been carbonating for like three days. Maybe it could mm. be ready. Maybe not. Let's just try it. Yes. And I put it on the tab and then we tried it and people loved it. Oh, really? Day, yeah. People, so many people loved it. Well, obviously, they loved yeah. it. It's delicious. Yeah. And then someone asked me, what's the name? I honestly didn't have a name. <laughs> but uh, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should make this beer and basically try to make an IP that's going to be loved by the whole nation. Yes. Easy drinking. That's gonna capture the whole country basically. So we call it the state capture. Idea. State capture. And I think that yeah. was the, yeah. the term that was going around South Africa at the time when our <coughs> Yes, yes, our, yes. Our yes. president <laughs> at the time was getting uh mm-hmm. well, maybe not started to get in trouble, but was was just in more trouble. Mm-hmm. Let's uh-huh. uh let's let's skip past our presidents because I know that's a touchy subject for most people. Um well what I wanted to say Upon my first impressions of this beer, yeah. you know, I'm smelling, so I'm getting a lot of, funny enough, I'm getting a lot of juicy notes. Yeah. So I'm going to be bold mm. to say yeah. that this, although it's a, it's a, clearly like an American style yeah. IPA, you know, it's got a little bit of haziness, it's, yeah. it's got those hoppy floral notes which hit, hit you, it's also got a certain juicy element. Yeah. Something you'd expect from a juicy IPA, a New yeah. England IPA, yeah. and that's on the on the nose. So yeah. when I smell it, there's a lot of sweet grape juice, melon, um, some citrus. Yeah. I'm gonna have a sip, and it's incredibly easy drinking. Incredibly easy it's drinking, it's, yeah. it's a session. Is no, there's you can you pick up that bitterness. Mm. It's there, 
but it dissipates. It goes away it so quickly. So quickly. So quickly. But I think it's also, there's a bit of medium body juiciness that, that, that mm. follows. It's not chewy. Yeah. It's not thick and chewy. No, it's not. But um, it's, it's juicy. It's clean. And it's, it's, it's easy to drink. So this is... So... What is it? What? I've used 60 IBUs. What's the... No, that's uh, like uh, 55. Okay, so just yeah. under 60. Okay, yeah. so that's... Yeah. It still has that IBU bitterness, yeah. but... It still has a bit of alcohol. But, I mean, I, I'm actually blown away at how easy drinking this is. So, basically on the malt, <coughs> it's simple. Don't use any other, uh, um, like, uh, not too many malts. It's basically pale malts mm -hmm. and a little bit of, of, of black malt. Hmm. Just that. So, the idea was to not to get much small flavors, just a little bit, just okay. a hint, and a bit of uh, just a tiny bit of color. And then the hops, we don't do bittering hops, as in like hop bittering addition. We start somewhere close to, towards the end, but we put a lot of hops. So that's where you get that juiciness. Mm, mm. Yeah, and also a lot of hops at uh, at Whirlpool when the, the beer is already starting to cool down. And then we put a lot of hops there. And then they give a lot of uh, uh, flavors. It, it, it's at a point where it releases a lot of beta acids, you know, and it's, it gives you this like uh, juiciness in the. <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. delicious. Um, yeah. What is which one's your biggest seller? I mean, you said did you say that the Uchwala is the the, the, the flagship? Uchwala is the flagship. Yeah, it's um. Chola is, is, is so unique. It's, it doesn't have competition in the industry. Mm, mm, it's, mm. Yeah, it's it is it's very a, unique. It's a, it's yes, a standard, it's a standalone beer. So it, that, that, that that's what gives it uh, this edge. But basically, mm -hmm. these two are the uh, have become the two main beers. Mm, mm. Even our black IP that we we making we've been making like kind of seasonal, but we're gonna start making it continuous now. Yes, uh, it's quite popular as well because it's also a dark beer full. Fully uh, full flavors like rusty flavors, chocolates and stuff, and a lot of citrus, but it's easy drinking as well. So with all our IPAs, we just try to go for less bitterness. Okay, so I'm trying to trying to work out in terms of capacity, and you obviously sell most of this at the brewery. It's a brew pub. Yeah, it's one of a few brew pubs actually. Yeah, in Cape Town. In Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you you brought the premise over mm -hmm. from. Uh, Mark at Riot Brewery. Yeah, it's still going, right? Yes, but yeah. you just brought over the premise now in terms yeah. of running the beer and making the beer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. am I correct in saying the majority of your beer is sold yeah. on site? Yeah, we we sell most of our beer on site at the moment. Mm. So we're looking into doing more uh, with the World Cup coming. With, with exactly, that's that's it has to be big. Big screen there, people coming to watch the games there. So there's a lot of people that love to come. Perfect, to watch you, you, it's that kind of sport. Yeah, you 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 took yeah. the the question out of my mouth there. Yeah. Can people come watch the football? Because that's that's what I want to do. Yes, I. I mean, I, I I tried to I tried to watch the rugby yeah. on Saturday at a pub. Yeah. It was just too busy. Yeah. And a quick shout out to Mike yeah. uh, from the Real Beer, Real Beer Revolution, who oh. is English. Mm. Um, hard luck, buddy. But uh, I, yeah. I just thought I'd, I'd bring that up because I know he's listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but maybe we should go watch the second or the third test together and have a yeah. have a have a Guinness or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Big love to Mikey. Yeah. Um, so good. So people can come watch the football, and it starts this yeah. Thursday. This Thursday, and there's we're on. there's something about yeah. watching the football. It's amazing how, for me, like I don't I, this this particular year as well. I haven't even watched a lot of rugby, but yeah. you won't. I haven't gone for maybe a a year watching a full ninety minutes of football. Yeah. But now when the World Cup is here, yeah, I'm gonna go watch four games in a day. I'm going to go watch <laughs> Nicaragua play yeah. Senegal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I've definitely. got absolutely... Yeah. I've never watched, the, but now the, there's, a, there's an energy there's, and excitement. Because that, I think, yeah, exactly. I think because World Cup is, is South Africa's yeah. had that World Cup, and, yeah. and now you can relate and now can to the energy. Can, exactly. And uh, I suppose it gives you a good excuse yeah. to go visit your... Your brewery. Your brewery, yes, uh, we yeah you can come there. So you guys going to be open every game. We open every game, happy, even the ones in the morning. Happy hour during <laughs> the games. You know, we even give you fresh snacks during the games. Oh, so, that's good. Yeah, we, we want you there because we we definitely going to be watching anyway. 
Yes. Uh, we, uh, we love football. Well, football I, is there. I can tell you this. One of the most important things uh, in life, basically, after the after most beer. important things, after beer. And, and, and after, our wives. And our wives. We have to put, we have to say. Yeah, it's more like family, beer, and football. Yes. For me. I'm glad. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah, that's but, a good uh, order. Yes. Yeah. yeah. God, family, beer, football. That's me. Yes. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, okay, cool. So I can tell you right now, as long as there's beer there, I will be there yeah, yeah. watching watching the football. Um, believe it or not, we only have three minutes left. I told you oh, this, no. the show would go quickly. Oh. I, and I, I'm glad I still have a little bit of beer left. But yeah. I wanted to talk very quickly about the Woodstock Winter Beer Festival, which yeah. is which we announced last week uh, with uh, Dylan and Murray from Woodstock, Woodstock Brewery, yeah. that it's going to be at the castle, the Cape of Good Hope yeah. castle, wow. which is Part of the wild. Like yeah. this, for our international guests, this yeah. is like a, a, a 17th century mm. fort. Yeah. And we're going to have it a beer festival probably in the grounds i mean i, I yeah. doubt they'll let us go into the old museums but this yeah. is going to be this is crazy so this is i'm super excited uh, it's the 4th of august saturday mm. the 4th of august i do believe tickets are on sale yeah and i do believe you will be there we'll be there <coughs> come up here it's going to be there we'll be serving all our three beers uh Ujwala, state capture in pursuit of happiness mm-hmm. and a little uh, surprise Ooh. Each one, let me let me just put it out there put it so, out there yeah I'm gonna make it a banana bread ale. Do wait, 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 wait. Because a I banana, love banana bread. banana bread ale. Yeah, because I love banana bread. I haven't made it. The most interesting thing that it's a beer that I've never made before. But I love banana, banana bread. I eat banana bread almost every day. If my wife stop me, don't stop me from buying it. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna make it banana bread. I have to inspired ask. beer. I have yeah. to ask. Yes. Where are you getting your banana from? Yeast or actual bananas? But. Mm, a little bit of both, yeah. Okay. But mostly from the yeast. And but the it's not bread, uh, yeah. Oh, because I, yes, I love banana bread. And I actually had um, yeah. a friend last week who said they're going to make a a British styled pudding mm-hmm. beer. Okay, wow. And I think, again, I reiterate what I said previously, like, yeah. We're at that stage in the industry where we have resources now to yeah. actually, <laughs> if we want to make a banana bread beer, yeah. Yeah. there's no guessing. Yeah. There's no like, let me do some research. Yeah. Oh wait, there's actually a, an ingredient, a recipe out there, yeah. most likely from Britain or yeah. the States. Yeah. People who've gone through that who've effort gone through that, yeah. and who said, no, do this, do that. Yeah. So I will probably be first in line to try that beer. I'm very excited. Yes, do that. Yes. So uh, it's, they, it's 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 going to be interesting. What are we now? We're we're halfway through June, so we, we've got a, we've got about six weeks to go. Six weeks to go. Yeah, um, really. But I'm very excited. I think we, yeah. I think from next week we're going to start giving some tickets away. I think that that needs to happen. Mm. Uh, I I, I kind of feel like there was something else I needed to ask you because we need to wrap it up now. Um, no, I think that's. I think that. I think this is it. This is do great. You want, do you want to ask me to uh, give you some free beer? Yes. Okay. I'll this is this one. is this is the primary the, the primary reason why I have the show. Okay. So is to it's a good excuse to to drink to beer. Get free beer. Okay, uh, okay. And just no, you I've know, got, you, I've got two bottles left for you. Uh, so yes. yeah, you've got free beer yes. to take home today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll have it later this evening because if I continue <laughs> drinking now, there's going to be no work that's done. Um, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Letu, I, I'd really thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. Good luck to future endeavors. Thank you yeah. uh, for bringing us Ukamba Beer Works. I really, honestly, and truly believe that you are a a front runner in this African unique African recipe that I think mm. everyone is kind of looking for, not just South Africans. I think yeah. people around the world are looking for something that's so unique, like yeah, an African yeah. ale. And yeah, we're, I, and we're the only ones who haven't done something that's ours. And I, I, I think we're getting there. Yeah. I think but we're getting there. there. We're very close. Okay. Yeah. Let's call it a day because I can see my wife is calling me. 
Oh, uh, and it's one minute. It's one minute past one. <laughs> so if she's calling me, it, it, there must be must be something going on. So let's okay. um, let's uh, let's play a song. Oh, let's play a little bit of Outcast. I like Outcast. And and we played yeah. Mr. Jackson first. Oh, yeah. Now let's play Mrs. Jackson. So ladies and gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much. Let's you thank you again. Yes, yes, Troy. Thanks very much. And we'll see you again yeah. soon, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. We'll see you guys next week. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for listening, guys and girls. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search for hashtag beer time. That's hashtag beer time written out in full. Hope you enjoyed the show and check you next time. Cheers. <laughs>